Hey there, it's Nina here with Walla Stamping. Just trying to get everything set up and ready to go right now. Just trying to get tuned in to my own Facebook Live, getting it all ready to go. I don't know where I am. There we go. Okay. Alrighty. So before I get started, I'm just going to give it another minute or so and see if I get some people to join me. Um, but this is the card that I'm going to be making and it is a Mother's Day card and I hope that you got the sneak peek of it. I had sent out messages through my email and posted some things on Facebook and that kind of thing. So. 5 o'clock my time may not be the best time for everybody and as time goes on and I get feedback about that then if I need to change it I certainly can do that. Um, I just thought that I would start out on Thursdays at 5 p.m. and just see how that is going to work out for everyone and um, just go from there. So this is the card that I'm going to make and I think that I will go ahead and get started. It's a couple of minutes past five o'clock. So let's get going on this card. Um, this card is made all with purple because purple is my favorite color and I wanted to do a Mother's Day card. So what I did was I started out with the card base and I'm doing that in Wisteria Wonder. Um, I just took a piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock and just cut it in half at five and a half inches. So you're going to keep both pieces of this cardstock to make this card with. Now the first one you're going to fold in half and I left my bone folder over here. Let me grab that real quick. All right, so I'm just going to take this first piece of Wisteria Wonder and I'm just going to fold it in half and this will become the card base right there. Then the other piece we're going to save and we'll be using that to cut out all of, all of our flowers with. So um, what you'll end up doing then is once you get this cut in half, you'll have two pieces that are five and a half by four and a quarter. You're going to fold one in half and keep one for making flowers. Then you're going to need a couple of pieces of some very vanilla. And I've got both of these cut to um, five and one quarter inches by four inches. And then I've got a couple of smaller pieces here that are just some scraps. And these are each about a half an inch wide and they're about five inches long. And that's what we're gonna stamp here. And I made myself two in case I mess up the first one. Then I've got one piece of elegant eggplant and this is cut to five inches by three and three fourths. So let's set this aside and we'll go ahead and get started putting this card together. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my elegant eggplant and just going to put this piece of scrap paper in here because I am going to be doing some stamping and some sponging. The ink color that I'm going to be using for this whole project today is going to be the elegant eggplant um, stamping pad. And I'm also going to be using some Wink of Stella, and this is just the clear glitter one. There's also a gold one, but I'm going to be using just this one today. And then I have a couple of stamping sponges that I'm going to be using also. So what you'll want to do with this is just get your ink open and I'm, I'm not going to use this one because it's got the Wink of Stella on it and as you can see I've got a little bit of glitter in my ink and I don't really need or want it there but I'm going to dip this sponge into my ink and I'm going to just start off the edge of the paper and just move in circles and put this color all around the edge of this elegant eggplant cardstock. Sure. 
Sugar is down here with me. <laughs> and she is over there chomping on her bone or something. So if you hear any strange noises in the background, it's my silly little sugar girl. She is so funny, y'all. She is a little French bulldog. And I don't know why she does this, but anytime she chews on anything, it's like she chokes herself. It's so weird and so funny all at the same time. Okay, so I've got all of that um, elegant eggplant around the edges of my cardstock here. So what I'm going to do next is take, let me see, I don't want to move that around, take my Wink of Stella and give it a good little shake. And I'm going to just place some of this right here on this silicone pad. I'm going to take this sponge and dip it into that Wink of Stella. And I'm going to pick up my cardstock and just rub this all around the edges like this, getting that color all around the edge, just like you would do if you were adding some um, ink color around the edge of your cardstock. And the reason why I'm putting it on this little silicone mat is because if I put it on top of paper, it's just going to absorb right into that paper. Then I'm going to lay it back down and rub that around in circles just like I did in the beginning with that other ink. I'm actually going to put myself just a little bit more down here. Just go all the way around this card and this is going to give it a nice subtle glimmer and sparkle without being too much or over the top. How pretty is that? I hope that you can see that glimmer and glitter. This first one I actually have a little bit more on, um, so I think I may just add a little bit more because I like it. And it may make your cardstock look like it's going to discolor it or make it look wet when you first put it on, but it will dry and it'll be fine. Actually, I may just rub that straight onto my sponge. Okay, that is looking nice. I think I may have gotten a little bit too much right there, but it's not bad. So that is our Wink of Stella done. I'm going to move this out of the way because I don't really need it anymore. Okay, so our next step will be to get our flower made for the card. Now, what you're going to be using is the Oh So Succulent Bundle. Now, this is a bundle that is retiring, but I'll have to tell you, it is so versatile. When I first ordered this bundle, I wasn't sure that I was in love with it. I like the stamp set fine, but it's the framelits that I absolutely adore because you can do so much with them. So I would urge you that if you like the Oh So Succulent bundle, if you like what you see me making with this today, you're going to want to hop online and get this ordered as soon as possible because all of these items are only going to last as long as there are supplies available. So if it runs out and you are wanting it, there's no way you're going to be able to get it later on. Okay, so I also want to say that I have a set of this gold and silver metallic ribbon combo pack that we had during celebration. And you can no longer get this because celebration is now ended, but I'm going to be giving this away. So what you'll want to do in order to be entered to win this combo pack of ribbon is go over to my blog and leave a comment underneath the post for the um, while I stamping live number three purple Mother's Day card and your name will go in to win, to win this um, set of ribbon. 
So let's set this over to the side. We got our cardstock ready there. I'm going to move that out of the way. Now this is where you're going to want the other half piece of your Wisteria Wonder, and you're going to need your Big Shot. So I left it on the other side of the room. I'm going to grab that real quick and bring it back over here. Move out of the way, sugar. Let me make sure that you can see that. So I have my magnetic plate and I'm going to put down one of the acrylic cutting pads then put my sheet of Wisteria Wonder down and then what you're going to do with your framelits is each one of these flowers you're going to cut one out. Let me scoot this back a little bit and I just load all of my flowers up on my paper so that I can get them all cut out in one pass instead of trying to cut everything out separately. Okay put that top plate on and then I'm going to run this through and since I have so many on there at one time I think I'll actually go through once and then come back through a second time just to make sure that I do get all of those cut out really well all right let's see how I did sometimes that one likes to stick okay, let me sit these over here to the side Get this one off. There we go. And also, I did not tell you this. My bad, my bad, my bad. You're also going to want a piece of old olive. And I forgot to cut that and bring it over here. So you'll want a piece that's about four by four inches because you're going to cut one of these large flowers out of the old olive. And something else that I'm going to be using today is my Big Shot die brush. And this is also an item that is retiring. Um, I don't know if, if Stamping Up is replacing it with something else, but this is something that I really enjoy using because it helps to get your paper out of the framelit when you cut something out. There we go, so I need to move that out of the way. And then I'm going to cut this large flower out of my old olive. And sometimes you can also just take your paper piercer and poke through the back of your framelit and get that out. There you go. Okay, so it's going to take me just a minute to get all of these out of the framelits. So bear with me, please. Move my big shot out of my way. wanting to be stubborn then I just use my paper piercer to help get them out and I think I'm missing one what did I do with the one that got stuck there it is What you doing over there, sugar? You got your bone? <laughs> I wish y'all could see this face looking at me right now. It's hilarious. Oops, she dropped it. Okay, got all of those out. Let me put all my framelits over here out of the way and then move my die brush out of the way. Now we're going to need our ink and we're also going to need our sponge again. So I'm going to grab my ink here. 
this one and grab my sponge. So you're going to basically do the same thing here is um, now on this green one, I put all of my ink on the outside portion of these little petals here. Then on the flowers, I'm doing it in the reverse. I'm putting the dark ink on the inside of the petals and working my way out. Actually, I'm going to put this over here. That would be less time consuming than reaching across myself to get to it over there. Okay, so that one is done. Now with the flowers, how am I doing on time? Not bad. We're going to start in the middle, just move in circles and work your way out toward the end of each of these petals. And I go, I would say within about a quarter of an inch of the edge of each one of those petals. Then of course, as the size of your flower gets a little bit smaller, you've got to work a little bit differently, but um, you'll see that as we go along. I really enjoy doing this type of sponging. I really like the look that I get from doing it. And quite honestly, it's kind of therapeutic in a way. It's almost like coloring in a coloring book or something. So if you enjoy doing that type of thing, like coloring in a coloring book or um, painting or doing any of those types of things, then you would love doing sponging. Okay, now, as my flowers are getting smaller, I don't want to get ink all over me, so I'm going to use my paper piercer to hold that into place. And I have a question for some of you. Um, we're going to be moving, and the neighborhood that we're moving into, and there is a stinking fly in here, um, the neighborhood that we're going to be moving into do not allow homeowners to have fences in their yard. And I have my little sugar bear, um, and I want to be able to let her go outside to use the bathroom, but I don't want to take a chance on her getting in the street or getting far away from the house because there's a wooded area behind my house that I'm moving to. And I um, had somebody come out and give me a price today on the underground fencing for your pet. And I was wondering if any of you guys have ever had that before or if you currently are using one of those type of systems for your pet and do you like it? Because I definitely want to be able to allow Sugar to go outside and not have to worry about her. Let's set that ink aside. Now I'm going to grab my bone folder and my larger flowers again. And I'm just going to gently roll these petals in between my thumb and the bone folder to give them a slight curl. And you don't want to be too aggressive with it. You just want to do this with a light touch because when you especially get down to those smaller flowers, because I did it on this one, um, you could easily pull one of the petals off if you try to get too aggressive with it. So just fair warning to you. And also, um, if you like this card and you would like a list of supplies needed to create it, if you would like to place an order with me, just send me an email. It is nina at com. Let me know that you're interested in making a purchase to make this card and I will um, provide you with my online store link where you can go and get whatever it is you would like or need and just remember that all of these retiring items are pretty much first come first serve if you think about it because once the supplies are gone they are gone so we got all of those 
curled up. And of course the green is gonna be the bottom. Sugar Bear, you're gonna have to move. I'm gonna step back and trip over you. And I'm just grabbing my dimensionals because that is how I'm going to build this flower. What I'm going to do first though, before I get to putting the flower together, is I'm gonna go ahead and start putting the cart itself together. And I have allowed myself, like a big silly, to run out of Fast Fuse and Snail, as I got to where I liked using Fast Fuse better, um, just because it's a really strong adhesive. So, since I'm out of both of those, I'm just gonna be using my liquid multi-purpose glue today and my dimensionals. So put one of these very vanilla pieces of cardstock on the inside. Then you're gonna want a, the second one to go on the outside. down. I'm going to go ahead and adhere my elegant eggplant cardstock to the top of my very vanilla. That looks pretty already. I love it. Now for the green part, the old olive, I'm just going to stick this down with some multi-purpose liquid glue, get that stuck into place, but everything else I'm going to be using my dimensionals to build this flower with because I want it to stand up off that page. So I'll just put a dimensional down here. Okay, Fly, you have got to go. It's summertime. That's the first thing you notice is every time you walk in or out of your house, a fly tries to follow you in. Ugh, drives me crazy. So I'm just going to keep building this just like you would if you were making a pan of lasagna. Put down a dimensional. Put down a flower. And as you can tell, the way that I'm stacking these is I'm putting down the next flower. Wait a second, I gotta get this back up for just a minute. Um, so that the petals are in between each one. So see how this petal, these two petals here, this one is showing from in between, and then the same thing with that, I'm allowing the petals from the flower below to show through the flower that I'm placing down. Okay, just keep building. Now as you get to these flowers that have the little smaller centers in them, um, you may want to take your dimensionals and just use these little smaller ones that are like half size on the outside and cut those off and use those because otherwise the dimensional is going to show from underneath your flower. Actually, it shows a little bit on that, but because I'm going to be covering this up with another flower, I'm not going to worry about it. But then I actually have some of these halves cut in half. And it's sticking to me. Okay, go on, fly. And we're down to our very last one. And I'm actually just going to use my glue to adhere this into place instead of trying to cut a dimensional down small enough to fit behind this little center. Okay, and I know that you can see that glue right now, but when it dries, it'll be clear, so it is not a thing at all. 
Okay, let me put a rhinestone in here. And what I want to point out to you is during the month of April, um, I do have a free pack of rhinestones that I'm going to be sending out to my April customers as a thank you gift. When you make a qualifying purchase, there is a post on my blog which explains how this will work. So if you're interested in getting a free package of these gorgeous rhinestones, and these are actually going to be retiring and they're they're replacing it with something different. I wish I could tell you what that something different is. I know it's going to be rhinestones and I think all they're doing is changing up the packaging with these right here because these are all attached together. If you wanted to put a big strip onto something, I think that's what's going to be changed. But either way, if you would like a pack of rhinestones as a thank you gift for me, then just simply um, place an order with me and um, you will get a pack of rhinestones if you do have a qualifying order. So I've got that rhinestone in there now. And what you would want to do is just come back in here, kind of fluff up your little petals a little bit. And I have about three to four minutes to finish up this card class tonight. So time is going really well so far. I am very glad. What I'm going to do is use the Oh So Succulent stamp set. I already have my um, greetings mounted on a block, and I'm just using a block D, and I have one on this side and one on this side. You can use whatever block you want and mount them on the same block on um, if it's smaller on different sides or peel it off and replace it with another one. So what I'm using is the Happy Mother's Day and um, it says because of you I am me and that's what's going to go on the inside. So let me open up my Elegant Eggplant again. So isn't it really cool that we're only using one color of ink on this whole project? I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. So I'm going to stamp this just about right there. See, that's why I cut myself an extra one, just in case I made a boo-boo, and I did. I didn't push down hard enough. There, that looks fine. Then while we're at it, I'm gonna go ahead and open my card and place my other greeting on the inside. Now, I've already glued this down. I, I better take that off or else I am gonna make a boo-boo. Set that over there. Then just stamp this down kind of in the middle, close to the top. Perfect. Get rid of that one, put this over here. Make sure I don't have ink on my fingers. Then I'm going to cut this strip right here, maybe three eighths to a half of an inch to the left of the word happy. Then cut straight up the center right there about a quarter of an inch then start at this little corner and cut up to that first line that or that first area that I cut and then do the same thing over here then just pull those off and then you've got this little banner now we're gonna stick these down with dimensionals also so let me just flip this over put a couple of the dimensionals on the back of there Oh, that fly, I'm gonna have, uh -uh. it has got to go. I can't stand that buzzing around. It makes me crazy. Does that bother any of the rest of you? I, oof, cannot stand it. Especially if it's one of those big old horse flies. Have you guys ever seen those? Lord have mercy in Tennessee. <laughs> They're like, they came from dinosaurs or something. They're ginormous. One time I was riding a horse and we were, riding through this trail in the woods and we came through this one area where there was a bunch of horse flies and they were eating my horse up. I felt so bad for him because they actually drew blood when they would bite him. So we just took off running and got the heck out of Dodge. Alrighty then. So here's the card that I made originally here. Oh, oh my goodness y'all. I have totally forgot to do something. You want to shoot me. I'm sure. Oh, my goodness, I did too much talking. You would want to take your Wink of Stella before you assemble your flower and 
run it all along the edges of each petal. Now, of course, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but you guys know how much I love anything that sparkles, so definitely I'm going to be putting this Wink of Stella around the edges of my flower. So you would just do it like that around each of the petals, and please don't be like me and forget to do it. Um, do it before you put your flower together. So anyway, when you get to the top one, you would just color the little petals in completely like that. And I am so sorry that I forgot to do that. I was talking and wasn't thinking. It's just kind of like chewing bubble gum and walking. I guess I can't talk and craft at the same time. So anyways, here's card number one, card number two. And I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial today. And I would love it if you guys would come back and join me every Thursday if five o'clock Central Time is not a good time for you, please leave me a comment in the description box below or go over to my website and leave me a comment underneath the post for this card. Um, you're gonna come you're going to accomplish two things you're going to let me know what time is going to work better for you and you're also going to be entered to win um, the ribbon by leaving a comment on my blog as well so whatever the census is the most people that have a time that works for them that is um, a good time for me as well. What was I trying to say? I lost my thought. Um, that's what I'll do. So if I'm going to change it from Thursday at five o'clock to a different day or a different time, I will make sure to post that on my, on my blog as well as post it onto Facebook. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had a good time. If you need any of the supplies again, all you have to do is send me an email or go to my online store. It is www.walleyestamping.stamping.com. Up .net. So I hope you guys have a great day and I'll talk to you soon.